Boy, it's cold out. Just thought I'd let you know that. Nice and cold. Where are we, where are we at officially? I, I, I have nine. I got to turn your mic on. I'm sorry. That's okay. Maybe you don't want to hear what I was going to say because it's lower. Four. I have four. Uh, four degrees above zero. And it'll be another cold one tomorrow morning, too. And actually, I thought it was supposed to warm up into the 40s today. And now they're saying that's not going to happen. We'll be in the 20s. Nonetheless, uh, today is the official uh, St. Patrick's Day. And I believe the New York City Parade is always held on the official day, right? Is the parade today? I didn't know that the parade's been held there since the 1700s, continuously. Yeah, it's an old parade. Yeah, and Mayor uh, Bill de Blasio not participating this year. He's protesting. Is it over um, gay issues? It is. Yeah. Uh, Bob Roth will talk to him. Uh, Syracuse, it was was the point of anger on, uh, on, on Friday night. It was, was it not anger? I'm just lucky that I was at my friend's parents' house watching it with them because otherwise, if I was at my own house... You couldn't break furniture there? The TV wasn't destroyed, is is my point. Uh, Most people, uh, when they go to somebody's house, they break bread. Andrew breaks furniture. (laughs) Uh, And a few other things, too, which we won't even get into. Um, We'll talk to Brandon Lang about the NCAA tournament. Maybe you're doing your your bracket. The new thing, of course, is that all these contests out there where you could win a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, Friday, the word came out that the Senate, New York State Senate, had uh, had put their proposed budget in place, and it is not very good for uh, upstate schools. The Assembly's budget seemed to help uh, maybe the, uh, the 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 city school districts like Utica will get some help, um, but really puts the uh, the the other districts, the rural districts. Um, even places like uh, Clinton and New Hartford in a, in a really difficult position, and the Senate budget even more so as it puts uh, big money into pre-K and into charter schools. So we'll talk to a few on that coming up uh, a little later on uh, in the morning. And high school sports uh, came to, the, the winter sports came to a conclusion yesterday. The, uh, the state tournament held, and New York Mills boys and the Notre Dame girls Walking away with uh, with big big wins, uh, becoming state champions, mm-hmm. and that uh, what's her Elizabeth Durr, Emily Emily Durr, mm-hmm. um, she broke all sorts of uh, section three records and scoring yeah. records, and uh, the girl that she broke the record that she broke was from uh, uh, CNS Cicero C- Cicero North Syracuse, and she's playing right now for UConn. Yeah, she's and a one sophomore. of the one of the better players in the in the country right now. So this this uh, this Emily Durr is is something, and she just so happens to go to the same school that Andrew went to. Yes, yes, and uh, she's Notre Dame. So a lot of that stuff to get into. How about the uh, how about the Russian uh, broadcaster? I believe he was some. I don't know, don't know what he is, but I think he's on some uh, some Russian television network uh, coming out over the uh, over the weekend saying uh, and pounding his fist saying we're the only country in the world that could turn the United States into radioactive dust. Mm. Doesn't it sound a lot like we're, we're, we're headed back to a, a Cold War? Mm-hmm. And it's almost as if uh, uh, we all, you know, you figured, okay, so with the breakup of uh, the Soviet Union, Russia doesn't have the power that it used to have. This all seems to be about the, uh, the, the people in Russia that don't want to... that that aren't happy with the fact that they aren't that big superpower anymore and want to become one all over again um, and are willing to really um, distance themselves from the rest of the world to get there. Pretty interesting stuff. And, and all this time, Jimmy Joseph was over there trying to uh, to do his duty as an ambassador, um, had people chanting, Russians chanting USA, and, uh, and, and it doesn't look like it did any good after all. When you think about that, though, that's pretty amazing. I was looking at some news photos over the weekend of things taking place in Russia, and it it's so funny because Vladimir Putin has a a large chunk of respect among his people, if, if for no other reason than you know just rattling that saber. They want to see that almost as yeah, if it's I, reassuring to them. Yeah, I think they want to be uh, they want to be the uh, the big superpower again. And imagine if we all of a sudden weren't. If all of a sudden we looked and didn't have the power and the finances that uh, that we used to have, um, how would uh, I guess we probably would want? Um, that's why I think when these companies these countries go from 
uh, uh, communism to a democracy. It's so important for, uh, I think, the, the Western world to help them up and to get them making money so that their people don't have a shortage of milk. Uh, because that just become that just breeds what we're looking at here in uh, in Russia right now. I think that's where it all comes from. No, absolutely. I mean, Charlie Wilson's war. That's all yeah. about you know. Yep. Same exact thing. Uh, let's see what else do we uh, do we have here? We have uh, uh, the protests going on at the St. Patrick's Day parade. The new mayor says he will not um, participate. And what is it? They don't allow uh, gay and lesbian groups. The problem is, I don't think they allow any protests. And they're looking at the uh, if, if they were in right that they would be that, that there would be more of a demonstration. So they seem to be trying to avoid that, but it's turning into an issue. De Blasio will not uh, will not participate. And you know, uh, Reverend Fred Phelps, he is the uh, Westboro Baptist Church. They don't like gay people, and they also are they they they'll protest military funerals because they say that the United States supports gays. And our military supports gays. So uh, they will, if, uh, if somebody dies in, uh, in combat, Afghanistan or, or uh, wherever else we are in the world, many places, uh, they will come out and, uh, and protest the funerals. Terrible signs. Awful for the family. Mm-hmm. Causes a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of pain. And the, uh, the, the head of the church, uh, Fred Phelps Sr., I'm uh, understanding is close to death, right? Yeah, there was, almost a, dead. there was a Facebook post from his estranged son. He's like 100. Yeah. Now, keep in mind that his daughter is the one that's really running things right now, and they have, I don't know, seven or eight kids. And some of those family members uh, have, uh, have, uh, do not agree with the, with the hate out mm-hmm. of their Baptist church, and that is one of the kids, right, the son? Yeah, Nathan, he's up in uh, Alberta or Calgary yeah. right now. And, of course, he's going to hell, according to the rest of the family. Because you're not listening to God's will. I'm wondering why they listen to God's, uh, they follow God's word literally. I wonder why they do that when it comes to gays, but they don't do that when it comes to slavery. Because in the Bible it does say that uh, a slave should obey their owner, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they, aren't, uh, they aren't anti-black. They don't seem to be pro-slave. It's the pick and choose part. It's the gay part that they're really pretty big on, so... Uh, but they will uh, quote scripture to tell you you're absolutely wrong. They're pretty good at that. Anyway, we may have an opportunity to talk to the son who is one uh, that that got away, right. if you will. And um, he has a page that, uh, that that really talks about the fact that it's uh, yeah he's not the way that he he's believes. really the exact opposite of his family. Uh, he's a very big activist of, in the LGBT world or um, yeah LGBT world, and he um, speaks out against it and child abuse. He talks about a lot of during his time growing up, in, you know, under his father's rule, there was a lot of physical abuse involved with um, kind of being indoctrinated yeah. into the church. Right, because if you're doing if you're following a, a musician that might be gay. Can you imagine? He may have been an Elton John fan. His father would beat him over that, maybe. I don't know. Uh, last night on 60 Minutes, there was a great story on... Uh, good morning, Davey. How are you doing in there? Good morning. Oh, good. How are you? Uh, there was a great story last night about um, uh, drones on 60 Minutes and watching what these things can do. It is like they had. they were doing a, a demonstration where there was a tree and there was kind of a hole and two, there was a branch up above that kind of curved around, and so it created a hole. So there's a hole in the tree a little bit bigger than the size of the drone. And the guy is like, well, I'm going to send this drone through that hole up into the sky, and then I'm going to reverse it until it comes right back to this point. It'll follow the trail right back through the hole and whip right down in front of our faces and stop. What do you think happened? It did that just that? That's exactly what it did. Yeah, I was going to say, it wouldn't have aired if it didn't. <laughs> well, no. I mean, remember, it's 60 minutes, so they, they would uh, probably love airing it if it didn't work. If it trimmed off a couple of branches. Never even touched a leaf. It was unbelievable. Uh, speaking of that and technology, it really do, you do kind of wonder where we're going with all of this stuff. Um, the other th- the, uh, thing they showed last night, too, is some of these drones... They're, they're building them so that they look like birds. There is a drone that looks like a hummingbird. It actually flaps wings really, really fast like a hummingbird would. 
So while out on your tree, uh, looking into your, peering into your upstairs bedroom window, is a hummingbird. You thought, but really that is a, uh, it's a, it's a drone. And it's videotaping your uh, your every move. And if you like to bird watch in the nude, that could be a problem. Be very careful, yeah. Now, oh, look at the beautiful little hummingbird. <laughs> Come here, hummingbird. Uh, the Japanese researchers there have built a life-size robot band. It plays real instruments. It is a robot band that plays instruments. Uh, there's a guitarist, a drummer, and a keyboardist. They can play some really complicated music as well. Do you want to hear a little bit of it? This is uh, maybe all of our music will be uh, Japanese robot music today. Uh, here is a little piece of the action. The robots playing. Now, the only thing that I say to that is, how is this any different from like MIDI? Right? MIDI is uh, your computer that plays music. Right. You put the notes in, and the computer will play it. But I think these guys are actually playing real instruments. That is the difference. So that's a real piano being played, a real guitar. They probably take requests, too. They do take requests. They know many songs. It's amazing how they can remember. It's uh, pretty incredible. Uh, 620, Christine has an update. I think you'll do the uh, update. Oh, I thought you could do the update using the Japanese robot I music. can take it away if you Please want. don't. Uh, here's Christine with an update on what's going on for Monday morning. St. Patrick's Day, good morning. Good morning. It is 620, an aviation engineer aboard that missing Malaysia Airlines flight is among those being closely investigated now. More winter weather could be hitting heading our way and hitting us. And the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee says it's important to have sanctions ready if Russia doesn't back down from the situation in Crimea. Uh, this is a Prince song. Uh, remember the Prince song, Get Crazy? I think that's what uh, this is. Here we go. Here we go. That doesn't sound like Prince to me. <laughs> <laughs> Robot Prince. Hey, the uh, I have to tell you, this, uh, this Malaysian plane is this story has become one of the unbelievable crazy stories of the world this is his this is history it's uh, we'll talk more about that coming up and you almost really feel like this music is crazy what? that's what it is this <laughs> is crazy music it's not let's go crazy uh, you almost feel like this thing um at this point they're pretty sure the pilot at least one of the pilots knew that it was being uh, diverted and you almost really feel like this thing's being hidden for the day when they can use it uh, probably sometime in the near future as uh, some sort of a terrorist tool. And uh, one of those targets, uh, not just the United States, but Israel, uh, thinking they may very well be a target. 621, back here in two minutes on Monday morning. It's St. Patrick's Day, WIBX. Six twenty-five on Monday morning. It's WIBX. Cold start to the day, but things are looking up. We'll talk to Ray Stajic from the Weather Channel in just a few minutes, and he's going to tell us that things are going to be a little warmer. But there is a snow event that seems to be brewing a little bit, heading into the middle of the week, and we'll get into that just uh, just a little bit here. Uh, let's see. So it was actually the uh, the head of the Russian news agency. That actually uh, said that uh, we are still in, uh, they need to know, we can bomb the United States into radioactive ash. Man, this just sounds like the days when we, somebody like Andrew would not even know what we're talking about. Right. Uh, Because you're too young for that. Not to experience it, but you know, you you read about it enough in high school. Listen, when a plane would go over when I was in uh, like elementary school, like in the early 70s, and an airplane would go over. There was enough talk about the, you know, the, the Soviet Union, and there was the uh, Griffiths Air Force Base, which was a nuclear base. There was enough where, when a plane went over, as a little kid, you were a little, uh, you were a little worried, thinking, "I wonder if that is an airplane coming to attack us." Did you do the under the desk drills? No, I never did. Yeah, that. we did that under because you know, having grown up in Miami, Cuba yeah. was so close. Right. That was always right. the big fair fear. We uh, did the under the desk drills, like children do other kinds of drills now i did an under the desk drill of my own um (laughs) usually in the library they had study curls and uh, as the librarian would be coming around i'd go under the desk to the other side she could never ever seem to catch me i was never too large so it was quite easy (laughs) a government-backed russian tv journalist warned that his country could turn the united states into radioactive ash sunday 
as the Obama administration threatened action if Russia annexes Crimea in the wake of Sunday's secession vote. Uh, Russia is the only country in the world that is realistically capable of turning the United States into radioactive ash, said Dmitry Kisiloyev. Uh, I'm sure I butchered that name. Uh, Kisiloyev, uh, handpicked by Russian President Vladimir Putin last year to head a new state news agency, made the inflammatory remarks standing in front of a photo of a mushroom cloud. Now, uh, what's interesting is to watch this whole thing. Come on, didn't we all know this has been coming for the last 15 years? Uh, the, it, it, it just seems that ever since Vladimir Putin has been around, it's little things are being brought back. Rights are being diminished. Uh, this whole dream of democracy in, uh, in Russia is, uh, is just not, um, this has been slowly happening. And this is, uh, I don't think this is any big surprise. Democracy is work. And it's uh, not it easily is, yeah. sustainable. And, you yeah. know, letting it just, letting people run rampant and, you know, undertake political changes and lifestyle and economic changes just overnight just does not happen. Well, and that is part of the problem. A lot of people, people have come from Russia over to here. A lot of the problem was the, uh, the corruption was, uh, was, was running rampant. They had uh, a real difficulty when it came to getting uh, getting food and supplies. Electricity was an issue. So you can only live like that for so long in the name of freedom, right? Before somebody comes along and says, listen, I can do this, and you're going to have your electricity back. The flow of food and supplies will be, uh, won't be an issue anymore. All of a sudden, that life looks a heck of a lot better than the life of democracy, mm-hmm. right? If, um, you know, you're going to give up some rights, but, man, things will be better. And I'm afraid that's what happens in these things. They really have to succeed, and that uh, has not been the case. Um, and the, uh, the missing airplane, uh, the Malaysian airplane, this is just the craziest story ever. Now, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I tend to, to hear a story when, I, when I'm listening to the radio. I tend to hear a story, and, I, and the vision goes into my mind. So I seem to remember watching some show, I don't know, the movie or whatever, where, they, uh, where they, they land the airplane in a jungle atmosphere and they grab a whole bunch of jungle branches and they put them over top of the, uh, uh, over the airplane so nobody can see it. Don't we have technology, though, that would be able to, maybe there's, uh, I mean, if somebody were to go inside the airplane and turn the power onto the airplane, all of a sudden the ping would begin, right, which would communicate with a, with a satellite and that's, unless that's been disabled. Uh, but other than that, how do you find an airplane in the middle of God knows where? Well, and also no cell phone connections, no nothing. I mean, yeah. we had Americans on this plane, so were they forced to give up their cellular devices before? And, you know. Are they being held captive? Are they being held captive? Are they you dead? You do not know, yeah. Yeah, you just don't know. This is really an unbelievable story. And uh, now they're saying some 26 countries across the, the, the globe are, are searching for this uh, airplane. Pretty crazy. 6.30, we'll talk to Ray Stajic about uh, what we can expect this week with the weather. And there is some snow in the forecast. Even with the temperatures up there a little bit, there is some snow. But by tomorrow, we'll be warming up a little bit. Uh, today will remain uh, pretty chilly. Hold tight. Back in two minutes. Update uh, from the newsroom with Christine in two on WIBX. Big St. Patrick's Day uh, celebration over the weekend. It's crazy, uh, crazy Saturday here. As the parade went off, it was what? I believe the parade on Saturday, Utica's parade, is now what the third largest in uh, in New York State. The parade actually lasted twenty two hours. <laughs> um, very long. <laughs> yeah, Andrew was I mean, there. And I was some, it may have felt like it lasted twenty two hours, like Andrew. So yeah, well, just just to give you an idea, I we had finished uh, when we were marching for the town square station. We had I finished, walked back up to. Did you actually the, march? Did you march in the parade? Did you? What, no, up, two, no, three, four? I forgot. I forgot my boots at home. Okay. But um, no, so I had finished, walked back to some of the establishments, and was enjoying myself, and was looking out the window, and could still see the parade going on. Yeah, I mean, it's a, we it's were a, pretty far back. Yeah, it's a long, long, big event. Um, big, really big. Um, anyway, that was over the weekend. A lot of people uh, partaking in the uh, you know no craziness, right? And it was cold. It was pretty cold, even though it was not the as cold as it was yesterday. It was just still cold and rainy, and and the wind was blowing. It was just uh, kind of a biting 
cold day. Everybody had smiles on their faces, though, in the pictures. Like you wouldn't, it wasn't a yeah. miserable well, rain. It was a, we're going to enjoy this rain. What we, uh, this is what we do. We've been, mm-hmm. I remember being in the parade when we had, uh, when the blizzard hit and Dolly Parton was stranded over at the, uh, at the Sheridan at the time. It was called the Sheridan, the Radisson. Uh, and she was watching the parade from her, uh, from her hotel window. Wild. Um, Ed Welch gave me, uh, sent this in. This is uh, pretty good. He said, Bill heard you speaking about the Yugo last week. It is a top three placeholder on my list of the worst cars ever made. <laughs> I had one, and, and yeah, there is the price. Yugo, just thirty nine ninety. I thought it was thirty nine wow. ninety five. Maybe I paid an extra $5 for something. Either way, thirty nine ninety. I, uh, I at, a, at a young age, I, I think I paid cash for the thing. Uh, pretty awesome. He says it may be the only car that looked like it was assembled at gunpoint. Probably true. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and but for me, and you know, I you know driving cars around that are fifty dollar cars, uh, this thing was uh, was pretty cool. Did not I, I have a couple things that I remember clearly about this vehicle. Gas cap. If you stole the gas cap, it was a threaded gas cap. That was a real problem. The radio, uh, the clock radio had uh, had military time. And you couldn't switch to uh, to an analog uh, time, or it wouldn't be analog. What would it be? What is the uh, uh, military, and then the stuff you see on the face of a clock? Civilian time. Civilian. Yeah, we could yeah. call it that, because <laughs> there aren't any civilian. There, are, you know, it's all military in Yugoslavia at the time. And um, uh, what else? Uh, I found my grandparents actually took the car. Uh, they liked it. They thought it was a really nice car. And they took it, and they they used that vehicle until one day they went out, and the entire frame of the vehicle had fallen off the <laughs> off the, the the body had fallen off the frame, so it must have rusted, and where the screws it just came right off, so that the body you couldn't move the car because like the, you couldn't open the doors, the entire right. body just fell right down. You couldn't sit in it because. Right, the, the, even the roof of the where the, the, it came down, and you'd have to be crouched down. It was the craziest thing that I've never seen that happen to a vehicle, but it did to this one. So uh, I have thank my goodness. Yugo ad. Thank, thank goodness you. that didn't happen ad while Walsh. they were they were driving. Can you imagine if they were driving and the uh, yeah, body just fell off? That's the, car? the problem. Imagine if that would have happened while they were driving the vehicle. It would have been a, a terrible disaster. And I thought my uh, starter recall was bad, but. Uh... Uh, your starter recall? Yeah, for yeah. my car. Well, that's the other thing that uh, this thing is going on with these general motor vehicles. Um, what happens if your car just stalls while you're driving? You we got to talk to Ed Welch about that. Because I've have you ever shut your car off while you're going down the road now? Um, in some cases, the steering wheel can lock up, so you don't ever want to have it shut off completely. But you you lose the, the brakes. You, you your, uh, doesn't have the power brakes, doesn't have the power steering. There's just something about steering one of those vehicles without power steering it almost seems harder i used to you know all vehicles never had power steering um i mean a lot of them mm-hmm. i drove vehicles without power steering i think one of the things i'm lucky about is that my car is uh it doesn't have a lot of it doesn't have electric locks it doesn't have um lo- uh, electric windows it's all manual so i don't think i would have that much of a problem if it were to stall out I they think- still make what they, do they still make cars that don't have electric windows yeah mine's a 2007 oh and, uh, i didn't know that and, and, yeah not that uh, you know. We don't. Something wrong with it. We, we don't. We don't roll windows anymore. I used to be afraid to drive a car with electric windows. Really? Because I would think, you know, growing up surrounded by water, I would think, you know, if your car goes off, there's no way. Oh, that's for you true. To, um, that is true. Though. So I really wanted. Yeah. Roll I, to this day. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want electric windows, but I have them. Try to stay out of the water with your vehicle. <laughs> that that usually helps. Ah. Ray, uh, Ray, stage exchange on the uh, on the phone line here. Ray, good morning. Good morning. Uh, what is going on? Is Ray there, has a is, cold. Is there another <laughs> snow event coming this week? Is uh it, potentially. Huh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look like a big event. Maybe some snow showers in here. Middle, latter part of the week. Uh, I don't know. There's there's a part of me that you get to St. Patrick's Day and you kind of start sensing that, oh, maybe this thing's over with winter, yeah. I mean. Um, but there's some indications it might turn a little bit colder again toward the weekend. Uh, but right now, uh, it's cold for this time of year. Yeah. Single digits above and below zero up north. So we're going to have a cold start to our day, but better this afternoon as we get mid-upper 20s, somewhere around 26 with a cloud-sun mix, and then tonight still single digits, but above zero, mainly clear 7, sunny tomorrow, milder 38, and then we'll get some rain showers as we look ahead toward Wednesday, probably ending or changing on over to snow showers by Wednesday night into Thursday. Thursday's highs will be in the upper 30s, 
And then as we take a sneak peek ahead to next weekend, it does look like there could be some rain and snow Saturday and then colder on Sunday. But right now, I mean, not too bad. I mean, no. it's not terrible. It's below normal, but it's not as bad as, I guess, most of the winter has been. Well, when you're, uh, when you're looking out that window and uh, yep. you realize, here we are, we're on the other side of the uh, midway of uh, March. We're, yep. we're heading down into April now. Um, and, and, you know, and it's not, listen, we've always had, we've had these winters that go on. It's just for the last few years, it seems like by the time it hits March, it's warming up and, uh, mm-hmm. and spring comes early. Yeah, not the case this year, not though. Not this year, yeah. Yep. All right, so uh, 26 or so, the high today, and yep. uh, and partly cloudy, some sunshine. Yeah. Nice job. All right. Uh, Ray Stage, thanks, man. Okay. Uh, we'll have uh, Bob Roth coming up on the Syracuse. I have, Bob, have faith. He keeps saying have faith. I have lost all faith. Uh, and when you're making out your bracket, how far can you honestly, without using your... You know your bias, your 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 hometown bias. How far can you honestly put Syracuse in your bracket? I don't know. We'll talk to Bob Roth coming up next. Here's Christine with an update on what's happening here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. The state of New York looking for volunteers to help them study the effect of light on birds. An alleged drunk driver swerved to avoid hitting juveniles and a police officer in the street over the weekend and a Rome man dead following a snowmobile crash. Uh, and as, uh, as Ray said, uh, partly cloudy today with some sunshine squeezing in here, high of 26 degrees. It's a cold start right now as we're at four degrees. Bob Roth uh, talking SU. They play on Thursday, a number three seed which I think they're pretty lucky to be a number three seed. Uh, we'll get into that with Bob coming up in two minutes on WIBX. Utica on tap. Six forty nine, cold start to the day, and Bob Roth. We had a cold start to the weekend on uh, on Friday, a really really cold start to the weekend. Syracuse just. Uh, how did you feel watching that game, Bob? Well, uh, I got to tell you something, Bill. I, I feel like I have really the whole year with them, even yeah. even though they they play thirty two games. Wow, I will tell you, you, come away. Like I said before, when they were twenty five and zero, they had to be one of the most unimpressive twenty five and zero teams I've seen. And I got to be honest with you, uh, you know, it, it's just uh, they played very poorly. Let's put it this way. But they, but, but when they but even when, when they were winning, they right. were scoring when they needed to score. You hit the I mean, nail on the head, Bill. It, and, the, and the point yeah. I want to make is when they were 25-0, and 0, uh, Cooney, Ennis, Fair made big plays down the stretch, and the ball bounced their way. You know, Ennis hits the bomb against uh, Pittsburgh to win. They make the steal against NC State, score with seven seconds to go. Well, in these last seven games, Ennis, Cooney, and Fair have not made big plays. Yeah. Albeit that Fair played really well in the second half, scoring 15 points. You know, trying to put the team on his on his back in the second half, he still had a big charge with 121 to go, and he had a charge in a few other games, a few games ago in this in the seven game stretch there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I listened to Bayheim in, in an interview, and what he said was, you know what, we've had trouble scoring the ball, we've had trouble shooting the ball all year, and, and, and he's true and he's right. But you know what, when you're doing those types of things, you better figure out different ways where you can score. Like I've said, come up in the front court, you know. Play a little pressure. Try to score in the front court. You know, you just can't say that this is what we're doing and this is our fate. You got to try to change your fate. That's your job as a coach. You have to try to do different types of things. They haven't done those types of things. You know. So how do you how do you go from a team that is scoring and 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 is able to score, like uh, and, and we've seen crazy, I mean, performances by Fair, by by Cooney, uh, by Ennis. Uh, but now all of a sudden they can't seem to just get it to go in. Easy shots, they can't get it to go in. That is, that has to be, I mean, is have you forgotten the basics? Or is there something in your head that you just can't seem to shoot the ball right? How well, does this happen? Well, you know, I'll tell you something. The one constant in basketball, and we said this a long time ago when they were 25-0, and all, is defense. That's constant. A lot of times the ball will go in the basket, a lot of times it won't. Yeah. It's like a hitter in baseball. Sometimes you're ripping the ball, sometimes you can't find a hole. So what you have to do is you have to try to do different things to get it to go in the basket for them. Like I said, the front court pressure defense, not the whole game, you know, but in different parts of the game. Change your defense a little bit. Play a little one three one. Play a little man-to-man. Do some different types of things instead of sitting where you're sitting. And, you know, here's the thing, too. You, you have to speak to this. In big games, big players have to perform, okay? North Carolina State has the ACC Player of the Year, T.J. Warren. Against Derek Syracuse in this game, he has 28 points, 8 rebounds. He defends C.J. Fair 
first team all ACC. He holds fair to nine points and three for 16 shooting from the field. Big players performed for NC State. Big player did not perform for Syracuse. You know, that's all I can say. I mean, and if we go back and really, not to, not to be the dead horse, but look at the points we said even when they were winning. Their defense was constant, yeah. and it has been, okay? They, they, you know, they have to shoot a high percentage to stay in games. They haven't shot a high percentage. They get very few easy baskets, and I said if they didn't do those types of things, it would be tough for them to win. They haven't had many easy baskets. They have no inside scoring presence, and there's little room for error. All these things, even when they were winning, like I said, they were masked when they were winning. They're not being masked right now. Uh, what do we know about Western Michigan? Uh, uh, watching 23-9. The, and nine, yeah, watching uh, common the, opponents. Yep. Uh, they beat Cornell 83-70. Syracuse beat Cornell 82-60. They split with Eastern Michigan. Syracuse beat Eastern Michigan. They're coming into this with a four-game winning streak. You know what? First round, you know, these are the teams, the high seeds. They don't have anything to lose. Yeah. The, the low, you know, I mean, excuse me, the lower seeds. The higher seeds are usually walking on eggshells. And, and, I heard, and, and, I heard and, you say that, yep. uh, you know, that you were surprised they were a three seed. I got to agree with you. I thought there would be a four or five seed. Mm-hmm. How they can be a three seed and Louisville be a four seed blows my mind. Okay, the, I guess the basketball bracketologist people were looking down on Syracuse. Uh, how far can they go, Bill? I think they can beat Western Michigan. I'm going to be a little uh, optimistic, thinking they can beat the winner of Ohio State and Dayton, and I think that's where, if if they can, that's where it'll end for them. Yeah. You know, yet this is a team that could go all the way. I mean, um, you know, playing at the way at the level they were playing, this is a team that could have gone all the way. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, I, I think, that, again, I think they have little room for error. I really do. Uh, guys, you know, you realize Cooney's a shooter. Since Notre Dame, he's shooting 27.8% from the field and 25% from three. Yeah, he had you – know? nobody has gotten on a, on, on a roll. It's just um, – and is, it, is, is that because they're, they're just defending Syracuse better? Yeah, I think so. I think if, if you remember, Bill, one thing we did say earlier is when you get into the ACC, when you get into your conference, and these guys are more intensive with, with studying film, with scouting you, they look at your strengths and weaknesses, and that's where you really look at, you know, what what it really is. You know, what's your shooting percentage overall? It doesn't matter in a non-conference. Who plays strong non-conference? Who doesn't? But within your conference, they really – Really lock in on your strengths and weaknesses. And I'll tell you something. Like I said, in you know seven, eight games ago, he cannot create his own shot. Okay, he's a guy that needs time and space. He's a catch and shoot shooter. They are forcing him farther and farther away from the basket. Those little subtle types of things they are doing to him. And think about it. Ennis is a very good player, had a very good year for a freshman, but he's not a scoring point guard. He is a point guard who is to distribute the basketball. And when he's called upon to score, like he did in the NC State game, then you have problems. This team is probably losing or going to lose when he has to score a lot of points for you. The number one option is fair. Hasn't, you know, he's been up and down. Cooney is the number two option. He's been horrible the last ten games. You know, thank God Jeremy Grant is back and healthy. Yeah. But you know what? They run nothing for him, uh, yeah. Bill. He's not an option. He's a guy who scores off of missed shots, off of broken down offensive plays. I got to tell you, if they play the way they have been playing, they don't they don't get past Western Michigan. Well, they may not. You, 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 it's very true. You know, I mean, you know, when you shoot forty percent from the field, and that's what they've done in the ACC as a team, forty percent, which is horrible. It's tough to win basketball games. You know, it, it yeah. really is. I, you know, it's just tough to win games. And, and, and for him to sit there and say, we haven't shot the ball well. Well, we know you haven't shot the ball well. Do some different things to yeah. give your team an opportunity to put the ball in the basket. That is your obligation as a coach, all, all right? You can't put the ball in the basket for him. I understand that. But you can do some different things to try to score in different ways. You know, so, it sounds it, almost like you're saying this is coaching. I mean, at this point, you got to be when, – when you fall like this, you got to be questioning coach. Well, you know what? I hate like heck to question coaches because he's won a lot of basketball games, and I think I've said this before. I think you said this earlier. Bob, what if you said this to Jim? What would he say? He'd probably say, Bob, I've won 940 games. You're yeah. sitting on Fairview Heights in Utica. Yeah. Very good point. But what I'm going to say to you is this. Some of it is coaching. I think also, think about this. They came down in transition. They got, they got I think, 
three or four three-point opportunities. Two of them were good looks. When that ball was scrambling and they and they hustled and got two or three, got like the second or third rebound. Yeah, he had two timeouts. Why are you sitting with him in your pocket? You can't yeah. carry him yeah. over to the next game. Call a timeout now. Try to run something set. Let's give ourselves not a desperation three, you, but you, a good look three. You knew it was not happening. They just uh, they, it just was nothing was dropping. So Bob, we'll talk to you on Friday. Uh, go Cuse. Have the faith, Bill. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, we'll update the news coming up in a second. Hold tight. WIBX and WIBX950.com.